Bob Anderson's been a great friend of mine for about 20 years now and became golfing partners for for quite a while. And on the golf course, you talk about a lot of interesting things, and I learned about Bob's true excellence as a teacher. He truly embraced global studies and challenged his students in every possible way that he could. I used to marvel at the number of readings that he'd have them do and the number of papers that he would write. I don't know how he got them all graded. And another uh, example of Bob's excellence and, and work at Elon is his service on academic council. He was a true mentor to me. He showed me the professionalism that you needed to uh, use to be effective in academic council, and he showed me how you could actually challenge yet and get along with administration and the duties with that job. He's a true, excellent member of the faculty, and he will be sorely missed. Pam is the first person of contact to all visitors in the School of Communications. She greets students, faculty, and visitors with grace, dignity, and Southern charm. Everyone feels right at home with Pam, as though you can sit and chat for a while. Pam has a fun-loving personality. I remember one year she volunteered to play Monica in a friend skit created for Employee Appreciation Day. She dressed the part of Monica, including wearing a black wig, and splashed around the fountain in front of Alamance for the opening scene. She had a lot of fun that day, and I am sure Pam will have a lot of fun during her retirement as she embraces everything that life offers her. Neil is boiling over with creativity. Neil is high energy. Neil is smart and practical. And Neil cares about the work, quality, and schedule and cost of the jobs he does. It is an empirical fact that without Neil's efforts, the university would have paid millions more for the construction than what we have done. The university would have taken possession of many facilities late, and it would not have the quality of the work that we now enjoy. You cannot argue with his success, and I want to thank Neil directly and in this forum for the incredible job he has done for Elon University. When I think of Jim Drummond, I go directly to the old admissions video and the shot of him at graduation with that wonderful smile. We have all seen it a thousand times. That shot is Jim Drummond, caring and happy for his students. He's described by colleagues as passionate about his teaching, his profession, and his students. His friends know him as a dedicated professional with the strongest of values and being the ultimate student mentor. And his real friends know him as the ultimate organizer of a week or weekend golf outing. We will miss you, Jim. The big smile and the sincere warmth. The best to you in retirement. Sandra Fields has been an extraordinarily capable assistant to President Fred Young and me. She is incredibly smart and a person of shining intelligence. She's worked long hours, handled an immense workload with extraordinary attention to detail. She's also a marvelous editor. Mostly, though, we're going to remember Sandra as a fine, fine human being. And we're going to miss her smile, her wit, her perceptiveness, and just the fun person she's been to have around the office. Sandra. We hope that you'll always stay very close to the Elon community. You're part of the family, and we hope to see you here often. Chuck's contributions have been remarkable and so very important to the university. As the very first chief of campus safety and police, he was the calm guiding force building our campus police force. His leadership provided Elon with what is recognized by his peers as one of the best campus police units in the state. Further, I can't help but reflect on his personal achievements that he would surely never mention himself. But I will say that in more than one case, his personal actions have saved the lives of students. I do mean that literally. The students know it, a few of us know it, but he would never think to say it because it was, in his words, my job. Chuck, I'm sure you would wish for Elon University in the future the best of everything and for constant improvement. And you told me recently that you would hold us responsible for making sure we made those improvements. Congratulations, Chuck. Irene Gibson retired last fall after 10 years at Elon, first in Human Resources and then at Belk Library. Everyone who knows her would speak first about her wonderful smile and positive attitude. She primarily welcomed people at the Circulation and Information Desk with a cheerful word and helpful attitude. She also harbored a hidden talent for locating books lost in the stacks. 
Her life recently has been shadowed by family health issues, but her dedication to her job and her strong support for Elon never wavered. We truly miss her friendly presence every day. Dan Hedden worked in the Elon University Physical Plant Department in Environmental Services as a sanitation recycle worker for almost 20 years. Dan always made it to work on time and was very dependable. Dan was a great friend of fellow staff and always shared information about where buildings were and how to get something done. He was very helpful. Dan works in his church in Graham. He is married to Carol Hedden. He has two children, Nicholas and Teresa, and one granddaughter who he loves dearly. At the annual physical plant staff appreciation lunch, Dan always enjoyed shooting pool with the other staff members. We all wish him the best in his retirement. Kate Hickey was hired as the head librarian several years ago. When she came, we were all worried about what's she going to be like? Will she make lots of changes? We had spent a lot of time planning for the new library. Well, Kate came in and she was enthusiastic about the new plan for the library and she jumped right into it. Now, she made changes, lots of changes, but she did it without a lot of collateral damage. And by that, I mean, she came in and subtly made changes that got everyone on board. And it was a real pleasure to work with her. I had the fortune of having an office right next to her. And she is probably the only person who keeps an office just like mine. Piles and piles of different information, but you know what's in each pile. It must be the librarian in her. Dr. Earl Honeycutt is a man who does not waste time. A prolific researcher who has authored four books and over 200 articles, the visionary creator and director of the highly successful Chandler Family Professional Sales Center, a dedicated student mentor who founded Elon's chapter of the National Sales and Marketing Fraternity Pi Sigma Epsilon, a supportive, collaborative, and generous colleague. There is simply not enough time to list Earl's many achievements, but suffice it to say that this master of efficiency has accomplished in 10 years at Elon what would take most individuals 20 or 30 years to achieve. He will be greatly missed. And while it is not his style, I hope he has fun living a little bit more in the slow lane as he enjoys more time with his wonderful family and his house by the beach. Karen Hughes has been a visible presence at Elon for well over 30 years. She's truly an ambassador for our school. She's interacted with students, families, and colleagues with the ideal blend of humor, attention, and commitment. It's no wonder countless numbers of those students and families have relied on Karen over the years for practically any and every need one can imagine. Her scope goes well beyond that of her title. Thank you, Karen, and congratulations on your much-deserved next chapter. Susan Klopman, from the Publications Office to the President's Office, and lastly, as Vice President for Admissions, Susan has had a wonderful and impactful tenure at Elon, and always with an overwhelming pleasantness and a can-do attitude. I would say if you want a good mentor, find Susan Klopman and sign up. If you want to learn how to lead, find Susan Klopman and sign up. And if you want a friend full of good advice, find Susan Klopman and sign on. Susan, you have done a wonderful job and have been an even more wonderful colleague. You will be missed, my friend. Pat Long has been part of the glue that has held together a rather spirited political science department, but also she has served departments of history and geography, sociology, philosophy, and religious studies, and even a couple of deans. Pat has always performed her work carefully and efficiently, whether retrieving and interpreting budgets, accepting with a smile one more faculty search, or probably her personal favorite, reserving spaces for the various honor societies and organizations she has supported. Students, faculty, and staff colleagues will miss her, but we know that she will have more time to spend with her family, visit the lake, and perhaps take a trip or two with Jesse to warm places far away. We wish her all the best in her retirement. Carolyn came to Elon University in 1989, and she has this true dedication to Elon that she wants to be at work every day, and I can always depend on her to do a good job at anything she does. And although the job has changed over the last few years, Carolyn hasn't. She's still that dependable, warm-hearted person that loves to do for others. She is such a treasure that we will truly miss her when she retires, and I'm hoping she won't forget where we are and how much she has meant to us in developing the accounts payable position into the position it is today. 
Phyllis Phillips was my first hire after coming to Elon as Dean of the School of Communications 11 years ago. She was working in the President's office at the time, and I called President Lambert to just make sure it was okay to hire one of his staff. When I told him, there was this long pause. Then the President said, well, Paul, your tenure as Dean has been a short one. Then he laughed and said, of course it's fine, that it's a well-deserved promotion for Phyllis. Phyllis and I have worked together now for 11 years and she is terrific. Super organized, thank goodness, and highly professional. The School of Communications will miss her tremendously. Bird is extraordinarily passionate about her work. Whether it is working with Elon students here on campus or in the rainforest of Costa Rica or with the students in the schools of Tajikistan, she puts all of herself into her teaching. As I watch her freshman students in her Global Studies course undergo the transformation from quiet, somewhat shy students, wondering who in the world is this woman teaching this class, to students with amazing, infectious enthusiasm spilling out of the classroom into the Mooney hallway to work on group projects, I am convinced I am watching a magician at work. Well known for her incredible work ethic, her kindness, and inspiring teaching, Carolyn has made substantial and lasting contributions to the Department of Education, the Special Education major, and Academic Service Learning. As Chair of the Education Department, her leadership was received with reviews that could be considered accolades. What most impresses those of us who know her well is how Carolyn goes about her work. She listens carefully when people speak. I'd even say she listens with her whole being. She shared her serenity, insights, and deep wisdom with us all while sidestepping the spotlight. We wish you all the best in your retirement, Carolyn. Have fun learning Spanish. Most of you in the room will not know Shirley White, who for 24 years worked behind the scenes at Belk Library, managing the print journals and magazines. She also was president of the Friends of the Library for over two decades. Quiet, competent, and reserved, Shirley hides a fascinating background that includes service in the U.S. Coast Guard, a long career with the Girl Scouts of America, and being an elected alderman for the town of Elon. She is proud of, and just think about this, riding a bicycle alone from Boston to New York City in 1950. The library staff admires Shirley's courage and determination and will miss her unique and wise presence. Catherine has planned just about every admissions event during her 24-year career at Elon. She practically invented Fellows and Scholarship Weekend, the most complex and intricate admissions recruitment event of the year. But her first love is transfer students, and she leaves with us the wish for scholarships and more housing for them. Catherine began working part-time, but all these years later, she's given not just her time, but her heart, sense of humor, and excellence to Elon. We're gonna miss her tremendously in the admissions office, but we're excited that she'll be able to spend more time with her beloved granddaughter, Lauren, and the rest of her family. Rudy's retirement at the end of this year culminates a long and distinguished teaching career at Elon dating to the late 1960s. In that period of time, Rudy has provided exemplary service to this institution through public lectures, his wisdom on numerous committees, and his mentoring of many students who found great stimulation in his classes and a professor who cared for their development outside of the classroom. His service to the Department of Political Science has been extraordinary. In addition to offering guidance for the direction of the department, Rudy has taught a great variety of courses in international relations, especially his international terrorism course, the Middle East and political theory. It has been a privilege for the members of our department to work with Rudy. He is a great friend to us all. He is literally irreplaceable, and we will miss him and wish him well in his richly deserved retirement.